one thing that we all have total control over. You know, we can't control the weather and we can't control what others think of us. We can't control how we feel all the time. We can't control the job market and the list goes on. And for some part, we can't always control our health or personal financial situations. But there's always one thing that we can control, and that's whether we respond to these situations in a positive way or react in a negative way. You know, there are good days and bad days. But if we allow the day to dictate how we're going to respond, then our attitudes can change from minute to minute. Have you ever been on a roller coaster? Well, I have. We go up, up, and up and anticipation builds, and then the big dip. But you know, in less than 60 seconds, it's all over. And I know a lot of people who live their lives that way, up one minute and down the next. And I've seen some who seem to be down all the time, and it's really a symptom of a poor outlook or attitude. You know, I'm not gonna stand here and say that we don't all face some pretty bad circumstances sometimes, and it's never pleasant when we do. But I do believe how we respond to these situations and circumstances affect how I deal with life as a whole. Now, personality testing showed that I can sometimes be overly optimistic to the point that I avoid or ignore important warning signs. But once I figured this out, I immediately started learning ways to keep a positive attitude, but to seek to make sure that I'm getting good and accurate feedback from others who can see the possible problems and pit pitfalls ahead. Now, mind you, it was hard for me to seek out the feedback from some of the people that I used to call negative Nellies. But once I did, I learned that by seeking a relationship from these people actually helped temper all of us. Some of the things I needed to hear came easier from them when I asked for it, and the hope that I wanted others to have started seeping into their personalities too. And my point is this, I've learned that a positive attitude is not one that ignores the negative side of things, and a negative attitude is not one that totally ignores the possibilities. But a positive mindset says, let's do something great, but let's make sure we observe the possible problems that we might encounter along the way. I've had to learn the hard way not to be critical of people when I believe they're being negative. And at one time, you might even say that I persecuted others for their negative thinking, and I had to learn a lesson the hard way. Some years back, as a supervisor, I come by part of my team having a philosophy discussion about our company, the union, and politics in general. As I observed them, I got frustrated with them and stopped for a few minutes to do an illustration that I'm gonna show you right here. I stopped by and I got a glass of water and I filled it up about halfway. And I set it down on the counter and I asked them, I said, how much water's in that container? You know, and it took them several minutes as they bantered back and forth laughing, and they said, we know what answer you're looking for, but do you want the truth? I said, yeah, I want the truth. And finally, after it was all said and done, one of them said, it's both. It's half full and it's half empty. And I said, you're exactly right. It doesn't matter. It is half empty and it is half full. But I took the lid off and I drank a little bit out of it. And I asked them to look at it again. I said, now, can you tell me how much is in there? They looked at it, and they were quite puzzled for a little bit, and they said, we're not, we're not getting that. I said, well, tell me how much water's in there. And after a little bit, they've kind of all agreed that it's a little less than half full. I said, you're exactly right, a little less than half full. I said, but there's another way of looking at it, too. I said, you can always say it's almost half full. Because when we look at what's not in there, that's what we uh, tend to describe. We forget to look at what's still in there, and that's how we speak. So after that, they started calling me Mr. Half Cup, the Half Cup guy. And a few weeks went by, and one of the guys that were in, was in that group came by to me and said, okay, Mr. Half Cup, tell me what you would do in this situation. And he just had started working for a real estate company, and he had sold a piece of property, and his cut on that property was supposed to be $8,000. But come to find out, his boss had came in behind him and finished up the deal and made him split the commission, which was $4,000. Well, he asked me, he said, how would you respond to that? And I told him, I said, well, you know, you get really to be careful about how you do respond to this because if you don't respond the right way, you may not get any commission moving forward. And I kind of made a little joke with him, and I said, you know, if you don't need the $4,000, I can take the $4,000. He said, that's not the point. You're not getting what I'm trying to say. And I said, well, what are you trying to say? 
He said, he messed me over. I think he did me wrong. And I, I went through the philosophy again, you know, being thankful for what was in the cup. Well, you know, a few weeks went by, and I had got my first bonus check. And I'd been counting on this bonus check for quite some time. And I was excited about it, and I got it in the, out of the envelope, and I looked at it. And it was about 10% of what I was expecting. I rolled it back up, stuck it in my pocket, had things to do that day, and I thought, I'll call the boss later. They must have made a mistake. So I called him later, and he says, no, that's right. He said, this is what your bonus base is when, when you're at entry level. And, and I said, well, I didn't understand that when I signed on for this. I was expecting quite a bit more than this. And he said, well, you probably should have asked that before you started. So that even angered me a little bit more, so I stuck it in my pocket. And I began to think about my attitude. My attitude wasn't very well, very good at that time, and I was angry and I was upset. And all the way home, I quoted a scripture to myself that says, my cup runneth over, my cup runneth over. And I had about an hour drive. And as I headed up the driveway, I had an illustration come to my mind. So I ran into the house and I, I got my cup. And I'm going to get another cup here just in a second. I'm going to show you what we did uh, with that illustration that changed my perspective and opened my eyes to something. Now I got in the house and after the drive all the way home I'm still trying to adjust my attitude because I know I'm the attitude guy. I'm telling everybody they ought to have a good attitude but right there at that time when this happened to me my attitude wasn't so good. But I believe it was God that told me to take that cup of water, a big glass of water, fill it about halfway full and poured into a small cup. And I kind of thought I knew where he was going with this, but I did it anyway, because I had to see the illustration. I want you to see it. As I began to pour that half a cup in there, this, this cup right here represented what I had in my hand today, that bonus check that was in my pocket. It represented my family, my life, everything about me. That's what I have today. As I began to pour it into that smaller cup, it ran over. Now the point is this, we all have a cup. Some have bigger cups, some have smaller cups. But what I learned through that lesson that day was, this is the cup I've got to deal with. How am I going to respond to it? If I don't respond well with this cup, I'm not going to respond very well with this big cup. We always say to ourselves, oh, when I hit a big or if I had this or I had that, things would be better for me. But you know what? If we can't handle what we've got, and be thankful for it and grateful for it. How are we ever going to be thankful for this? So I thought the lesson was also for the guy that I had the discussion with in my office that day when I teased him about giving me his $4,000. Well, you know, the money was different. The situation was a little different, but you know, the principle is still the same. His cup was half full. He didn't see it. He kept looking at what, was not, what, what wasn't in there. But you know what? I did the very same thing. So we have that tendency to do that. So the point of this lesson is there is one thing that we can control, and that's our attitude. How we look at things is going to dictate how better things get tomorrow, and the next day, next week, next year. So take a look at your cup. Don't look at everybody else's cup. Look at your cup. Find reasons to be thankful for it, and it will get better. Now, to prove my point, that little check that I got that day was about $350. I was expecting about $3,500. Well, it wasn't about a year and a half later, I got my own store. I become the store manager. And my bonus got a lot better. So when I got my first bonus check, the next time I thought of that cup that day, and I was so glad that I was thankful for what I got that day. Because you know what? That $350 was a lot more than a lot of people had. Some people don't have $10 to their name. But I got $350 that day. And I had to learn to adjust my attitude to be thankful. So be thankful. Check your attitude.